Hey guys and welcome to an epic showdown and boy oh boy do we have a treat. We have the might of Papa Palpatine up against AC Moore. Two top tier players and when these guys face off against each other on the battlefield you know it's going to be a fantastic game. Now the Beastmen all around I think need a little bit of love and most people consider them to be pretty poor and up against vampire counts. That is a scary opposition. There's a lot of fear, a lot of terror that comes with the Vampire Count forces, and Beastmen tend to not like that. So it looks like Pal Palpatine has gone relatively elite in his front line to try and get his troops to hold that little while longer. And we have Bestigors dotted all the way along. And I really like this pick in general. Bestigors have a decent amount of AP and will even bring down Blood Knights and larger creatures in sustained combat. But that is if they hold, of course. On the flanks, we have some Ungor Spearherds dotted either side to help protect up against cavalry, warhounds, and the like. And then we have two packs. We have Razorgore Herds rolling dirty with some Minotaurs with great weapons on either side. So obviously the Razorgore Herds trying to apply some of that mass and pin in the enemy troops while the Minotaurs do the butcher's work and the killing. In the centre we have two units of the cheap and cheerful Ungor Raiders going to be sitting back and having a good time, loosening a few arrows and just chatting and chilling. More Ungol Spearheads are in the back, supported here by the Sons of Goros, the Regiment of Renowned Centigors with great weapons. These guys are incredibly fast, pack a punch, and of course do bring Guardian to the table. It is very useful when you have such a squishy character such as Malagor the Dark Omen leading your forces. I love the fact everywhere he treads, the world weeps. And he is looking pretty scary indeed. Coming in with Traitorkin, a spell you don't get to see terribly often, but basically a souped up flock of doom with some added minus 24% speed, which is quite nice. Bray Scream and Vile Tide. Always good to see Malagor getting his day in the sun. Now for the Vampire Count Forces, up in the sky as usual, we have a Blood Dragon Vampire Lord with the Helm of Discord looking ferocious. Coming in as well with Raised Dead, Dance Macabre and Invocation of the Hex. So basically, the standard competitive toolset. We have a load of zombies through the front line, meat shields and meat bags to absorb the initial charge and damage, which is a really nice play because all round beastmen can do a lot of work on the charge. In the main battle line, we've gone pretty cheap again, skeleton spearmen dotted all the way along, as well as some sternsmen in that central portion. So for the most part, he sacrificed the quality of the infantry, known up their work and absorb up the enemy, while he has triple blood knights in the back line to cycle charge and do the damage. Blood knights can basically kill anything in the beast men roster as long as it is effectively cycle charging and not pinned in place so i really quite like this play particularly with the double white king on the ground with scaviscafe which is a real nice kind of breath tear attack and uh, can help clear out chaff quite a lot so you don't really need to worry too much on the quality of your ground troops and the armies do march against each other so who's your money on guys who are you predicting or uh, is it going to be a nice little close game? But it looks like a Bray Scream has gone down. Clipping the stones when they're doing some nice damage straight off the rip. Pushing a lot of these guys down, but not killing any models. And these guys, of course, do have regeneration. So it can be a little tough to drag them down over the course with attacks such as this. But we could see some nice Vile Tide go down. But this is kind of my problem with Malagor the Dark Omen. Is a lot of his spells are really effective when you overcast them. Such as Vile Tide. And he is very squishy. You can see one overcast... Uh, becoming a miscast there, going down to 3,250 HP. If a dragon lands on him, he just gets squished instantly. And that's kind of my problem with Malagor is he's a little too squishy. Maybe if he was flying around the battlefield or had the ability to fly for a limited time with those little chicken wings of his, I think he would be a little bit better. But nonetheless, he's going to be leading the charge into combat as the best scores get ready to clash up against the zombies as well as the White Kings who give them a bit better run for their money. Looks like some skeleton spearmen on this flank are pulling back trying to drag the Bestigors to an isolated position where the dragon can really do the damage. Ungol Raiders doing some nice damage, but a Scavascape does come down the line, doing good work to them. A big Vile Tide slams into the Sternsman, and the Bestigors now can be having a whale of a time, particularly when supported by the Sons of Goros. You can see his Ungol Spearhead a little bit isolated out on this flank, allowing the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord to really finish them up and get back up into the skies, but they didn't take too much damage, surprisingly. Sons of Goros do try to get over to surround the dragon. These guys can certainly bring down such a beast if it remains pinned in. But luckily for the undead player, it has got up into the sky. We have another Bray Scream coming in, smacking the stones when a load of magic has been poured onto them. Good micro management as well. The Razor Gore Piggies charging their way into combat, but they have now rampaged. We have a load of Minotaurs sitting around chilling. Looks like they're repositioning with the Ungor Spearherds. Just looking to counter punch those Blood Knights when they do come in. Because the front line is going really well for the Beastmen. They're certainly starting to destroy their enemy. Although one unit is running for its life at the moment. 
Blood Dragon Vampire Lord's going to take the opportunity to terrify off these Ungor Spirit Herds. He's taking a little bit of poke cover from the missile pressure coming in from the Beastmen. Vestical Herds clean up Skeleton Warriors in the front line, up to 92 kills already. Looks like we are going to be getting... Is this Traitor King? It is! We're getting Traitor King go down on the Skeleton Warriors. The Sternsmen, as well as all these zombies, White Kings, and all the good stuff. It looks like the Sternsmen will finally be biting the bullet. In the back line, Blood Knights do attempt to charge in, but this is the problem. Mine tools with Razor Gores counter charge, and those Blood Knights are getting slaughtered, but a well-placed Helm of Discord comes in, neutering the effectiveness of all of these Mine tools, all of these Razor Gores, and allowing the Blood Knights to escape. Beautiful play there by Maws to bring in the Dragon at a key opportunity, plus popping that Invocation Heck on the Blood Knights. Beautiful Vampire Camp play right there. So the Raid Scores are routing. Looks like the Ungor Raiders have been overrun as well. White Kings starting to start getting a little bit surrounded though. Mine Tools of Grapens will be able to drag them down pretty quickly. They have those big cleaving axes. And Best Scores doing a good job in the front line continuously. Skeleton Moros simply going to be no match now particularly because the Sternsmen have been dealt with. One big problem though for the Beastmen is this unit of Best Scores has kind of been dragged away. It's dealing with zombies which isn't too much. A big breath attack does come down the line. Roasting some of those Best Scores doing massive damage damage and now a lot of the pockets of strength for the beastmen are kind of in different elements and are all a little bit spread out here a well-placed trade king goes down on the blood knights and this is some play i love to see combining that lower in speed with the minotaurs allows them to catch the blood knights and it's gonna be even harder for these guys to pull out but more blood knights do come very rear attack pinning those minotaurs in place and all of a sudden that winning engagement is losing very rapidly minotaurs pour themselves in brace screen dragon everything committing to this main fight and it seems that it is coming up a vampire count favoured. But more Bestigors shall be rallying, likewise the Ungor Spearhead. The White King is going to be dueling Malagor the Dark Omen. Not a, a kind of combat that Malagor tends to favour too much, but he's going to be cycle charging, baiting out the White Kings, wagging his little tail, and he's like, come at me, look at me, over here. And uh, flees once more. Lovely Scabberscape goes down the line, though, butchering Ungors, making them explode in puffs of blood and carnage. Minotaurs charge into the deep one last time, with the support of some best scores looking to surround the White Kings and finish those guys off for good. Elsewhere around the battlefield, Blood Knights are wrapping up the remainder of the Beastmen forces, running them down, pushing that balance power more and more in favour of the Blood Dragons themselves. Lovely overcast invocation heck catching all three Blood Knights, and that's why these guys are considered some of the best cavalry in the game, is because they have so much lovely access to healing. I really think them and Questing Knights probably take the uh, the top picks. Ungor Raiders again terrified, don't blame them. Big scary dragon is coming in for action. And the Minotaur's doing a pretty decent job here. The White King's getting relatively low, particularly this one here. Malagor charging to and fro. Once more, follow me, lads, into action! directly aiming for a rear attack on the White King. I love the Minotaur's attack animation as well. When they roll, it's so cool. Looks like another um, a big breath of Is that a Vile Tide if it went down or a Brace Scream on the Blood Knights? Doing some okay damage there. There's a Summoner Zombies pinning these Besticles in place as Malagor and the boys do manage to deal with both the Hero Core, which is very impressive work, but not before they've done some lovely damage to themselves, particularly with those Scaver Scaifes. This White King certainly doomed. The other may be saved yet as Blood Knights and the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord charge into the deep. I'm thinking we're going to get a Helm of Discord popped as well when the Blood Knights charge in. Because otherwise this dragon could be in a sticky situation. And there we go. Helm of Discord is popped. A very, very powerful item. And the Blood Knights charge in with Dance Macabre popped on them. This is going to be a bloodbath of slaughter. And not the type of the Minotaurs enjoy. Bestigors flee for their life. More Blood Knights coming. Lances lowered straight onto those Bestigors who currently have, like, just... God awful stats right now. My god, the Helm just got very powerful, but it has started to wear off. Unfortunately, by the time that has happened, the Minotaurs are running for their lives down to two models. Bestigors have abandoned Malagor himself, and the Blood Knights looking rather healthier. This other White King has stabilized himself, and he's trying to get a little bit of revenge. Pop on top of the uh, giant Dark Lord himself. But it seems like the Beastmen are going to bow out. A valiant defeat and a really fun game all round. I love some of the combinations Papa Palpatine brought here. Stuff you don't get to see terribly often. An elite front line for the Beastmen, as well as the Traitor King combined with the Minotaurs in an attempt to deal with the Blood Knights. But AC Moore, his micromanagement is very uh, kind of on point almost always. 
and his Steph Strikes coming down with the dragon at key moments to help protect his knights really is what won him the game because his infantry just got slaughtered, his white kings got dragged down into the dust, and it was looking a little, little scary for him, but luckily the... Uh, Blood Knights, led by the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, managed to seal victory. Malagor himself, not doing shabby whatsoever with some really impressive damage value and damage dealt. But we'll get to all that stuff in just a second. Before that, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. As well as comment down below, what was your favourite moment? Who was your MVP? Who were you rooting for? And what do you think the Beastmen need in the next DLC to make them a little bit more competitive? And yeah, also feel free to subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy Total War Warhammer content. We're getting very close to 5,000 subscribers and when we do so, we will of course be doing a special live stream with a duck themed giveaway. There are links down below in the description to my Patreon where you can support the channel. Nexus where you can buy a bucket ton of games from Steam at no additional cost yourself. But it also helps support the channel and is supported by all the creators of such games. And there's a link as well to my Discord where you can submit replays to me, get involved in events I host, keep up to date with the Total War multiplayer scene, and chill out with a load of cool people and receive a load of cool pictures of ducks. But on to the good stuff. Malagor the Dark Omen. 2,786 damage value. Certainly not too shabby with 15k damage dealt in the back pocket. Really nice Brace Screams. Personally, not the biggest fan of such uh, the spell, basically, because it's... It's got a really weird cone of fire that doesn't really go very far. So it's you've got to place it really well. And I think Vile Tide is just a superior spell in general. But again, I'm not Beastman main, so I'm sure Pal Palpatine can sh shed a little bit of light on such spells. The Spearheads got slaughtered, isolated rather well by Maws, but it did make the Beastmen line a little bit wider and allowed the best scores to get in there and do some really good damage. If you look across the board though, the damage value, pretty poor. 750 here, 850, 481, 549, but huge kills. 253 kills, reigning anywhere between, yeah, 253 and 82. Cleared a lot of chaff, which is what you need to do up against the Vampire Cants, so you can circle and kind of slaughter, surround their big single entity monsters. Uncle Ray did an okay job, 530 damage value here, 396 on the other unit. Sons of Gorus, I'm not sure what dealt with them in the end, I think they most likely got isolated by Blood Knights, but coming in with still a pretty impressive 784 damage value, a really fantastic unit in my humble duck opinion. Razor Gore Herds combined with the Minotaurs was a really nice play, however the Razor Gores didn't get much value. Minotaurs only 500 on this unit, second unit much better with 1468, unfortunately it wasn't quite enough to pin in those knights and kill them for good. As for AC Moors, the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, 2,000 damage value and still about 50% health at the end game, so plenty left to give. Coming in with some really nice spells and, and basically the Helm of Discord is what really helped Moors win this as well. For the Double Viking, 860 damage value, 900. Some good scab escapes just to get those Ungle Raiders off the field and help clear out the chaff. Did a good job as well holding back Malagor and some of those Minotaurs before eventually being dragged down. Zombies, basically no kills. I mean, these guys, eight kills. Woohoo! You did, you did good champs, but getting slaughtered. And that's basically the story for the entire ground force. Even the Sternsman, a relatively expensive unit who's meant to be super tanky. So good in this matchup because you can't kill them as Beastmen. Got 7 kills and only 400 damage value, really being the focus of a lot of the magical firepower from Malagor the Dark Omen. True Blood Knights, how did they work? Well, 1,100 damage value, 1,300, 1,912, a real solid punch alongside that dragon, and the Helmet Discord is what won AC Moors the game. Now, I love Malagor. I think he's really cool thematically, and I just, I'm not sure what he needs to succeed. He needs to either be a little, little bit uh, less susceptible to miscast chances, because it can really cost you early on when he just explodes his own brains out. And as we know, Beastmen have very poor leadership, so having your leader damaged or fleeing can cause you all kinds of problems. I also do think, given him the ability to fly, and I'm not saying he has to stay flying all the time and kind of float up in the sky, but maybe he can fly just for a short duration to get out of sticky situations. I think it does actually fit the lore. I believe he flies in lore. I'm maybe, maybe mistaken there, but I'm 99% sure he can indeed do that. And I think it'd be cool to see that portrayed here on the battlefield. Very excited for Total War Warhammer 3, where I think they've actually added an option to land flying troops, which I think could work rather nicely. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.